Hello and welcome to this TechLab Partner Spotlight webinar. My name is Lee Snyder, the product manager for the Steel Segment here at Trimble. And today I'm joined by David from SigmaTube, who will be presenting to us later on in this webinar. So to introduce the topic of what we're going to be discussing today, we're going to show how we can model handrail within Techl structures, export this out to SigmaTube, which can then process that handrail and convert it into a specific format that is then read by EMI, which will then fabricate the copes and the miters for the handrail. So that's the premise of what we're discussing today is how you can model in handrail within Tecla and then fabricate that just as it appears there within the model. So a little bit more information about the Tecla workflow. We're going to go through and show this live. But just to highlight what we're focusing on today, we're dealing specifically with the miters and the copes for handrail and how that can be processed all the way through Sigma tube down through EMI and generated there. So we're not talking about Handrail bending, if you are interested in that, that's a different solution from what we're going to be presenting today. Uh, but definitely reach out to us and we can get you more information on that. What we're focusing again are just the copes and the miters. So uh, what I've done here is just created just a few images of the options that I'm talking about. So if you're coping in this pipe, this uh, stanchion here, coping that around the top rail, or with these horizontal mid rails coping around the vertical pipe or the end returns or the bends there. Those will just be mitered and these are options that you can use within our components. Or if you have them exploded or doing some manual modeling, uh, then you can just use part cuts or railing miters, line cuts, fittings, that sort of thing to be able to create everything appropriately. Then what you'll do is you'll then export that using our multi-converter. This is an extension that's available for download on the warehouse. We're just going to export that as a step file using the settings that I've indicated here. And that produces the file that we need to then continue this workflow. What happens from there is we'll send that step file over to SigmaTube. SigmaTube is an add-on that runs within SolidWorks. So they'll then import that into SolidWorks. SigmaTube will then process all of that information. From that, they can then generate the toolpath and nest all of the pipe and everything that's going to be cut. And that can then be posted to the machine where it will actually be fabricated just as it appears there within the model. So let's go ahead and take a look in the Tecla model to see how we can get the proper exports to send over to SigmaTube. So the first thing that I'll do is just come in and filter out everything except my stair and rails so that we can easily see these. Uh, you'll notice here in the model there are some already some existing rails. These are modeled properly so that we can send the export. You'll also notice here that I have some stairs where the handrail hasn't been modeled yet. We'll go ahead and add that in just to show you the settings that are used. And then again, here's just some examples of rail that have already been added into this project. So let's go ahead and focus here over on this stair. We'll just add in one run here so I can show you the settings that you need to use and then show you how to create the export. So the first thing that I'll do is just come over here to Steel Detailing, down to Miscellaneous. We can choose the handrails. And then the tools that I want to focus on primarily are 76 and 77. So the first thing that we can do here is put in our vertical posts. So I'm just going to use just regular localized settings here. I'm using the U.S. Imperial environment here. So let's just go ahead and pick our bottom point where we want to start from, where we want to end. And then I'll just choose the stringers that we want to attach these posts to. So I'll just go ahead and click those, hit the middle mouse button, and it will place those posts there for me within the model. The next thing that we can do is come in and add in our horizontal rails. So again, I'm just going to use this regular localized settings here. And then I'm just going to choose the posts that I want to attach these rails to here. And as soon as I'm done, hit the middle mouse button and it will go through and add in the rails. So let me redraw the view to hide the cuts in the welds. Then I'll show you here as I zoom in, you'll notice that these settings is putting in elbows here. You'll also notice if I change my representation, it's just running these from center to center, point to point. And for this specific machine, we're not going to do any of the pipe bending. We're just dealing primarily with the miters and the cope. So I'm going to change my settings to just use miters here for the corners and then to cope these pipes so that the machine can cut those. Again, if you're interested in the bending solution, that's not what we're discussing today. We're just focusing primarily on sending the miters in the coped handrail 
to the machine. So let's go ahead and start making the changes. So the first thing that I'll do here, let's go ahead and add in an end return up here at the top. So let me just choose this option here and then I can just plug in some values here just to get this to pull in. You can make these anything that they need to be. Um, I'll just add in these settings here. Go ahead and hit modify. And then you can see that I'll have the end return add up here. You'll also notice that it's using the elbows, which we will go in and modify here. So well, let's go over to the parameters tab. And the first thing that I want to change is this top rail to stanchion fitting. So instead of it just running square, I want to come in and change this setting so that it's actually going to be coked around that top rail. And here I'm just going to add in a tolerance that will add in uh, just an extra setback for the welding. And then the other thing that I want to adjust is this other rail to stanchion fitting. So how these uh, tubes right here are meeting into the vertical posts. So I'm just going to choose this option here just so that they can be coped around. Again, I'm just going to use this setting. Click on modify so that you can see these changes added into the model. And then I'll also redraw this view. And then let me just change my representation and click on this so you can see how these are now being coped around the vertical pipe. And then also here, again, if I adjust this setting, you can see that this is being coped around that top rail. So we still have the bends there on the end returns and then also for the top and bottom and middle rails. So let's go ahead and address those now. So if I come over to the Rails tab, these are the settings that I want to change from using any of these elbow options to just use this mitered setting here. So that will go ahead and adjust that for both of my top and bottom end returns as well as my top and bottom rails. So I'll just go ahead and hit Modify and we can see these changes take place within the model. So you'll notice here, again let me just redraw this real quick. So you can see now I have the miters here on my top and my bottom rails and then also the miters here for my bottom return as well as for my top return. So next thing that we need to do are to adjust the middle rails. So let's go to the middle rail tab and again we're just going to make the same change from being bent to a miter option. Let me select this in the model, go ahead and click on modify and then it's going to adjust these rails here as you can see they're right in the middle. And then just like anything within Tecla, if these are the specific settings that you want to use, you can just go up to Save As, save these away, and then the next time that you go to model this in within Tecla, it's going to use all of these same settings. So I showed how you can just model it uh, from scratch by inserting it, just using basic settings, then going in and modifying it afterward. Once you know that these are the specific settings that you want to use, you can just save that away so that when you go in and add in your posts and your rails, you get this same output with the miters and the copes right to begin with so that you don't have to go back and modify it after the fact. So if I redraw that and take a look, everything should be good to go to export. So what I'll do first, let me just come up here and run a numbering, make sure all the piece marks are assigned properly. And then what I'll do is just zoom out here a little and let's go ahead and select all of the handrail so that we can include these in the export. So I'll just choose this option and window over the entire model. Now I just have my handrail selected. And now what I want to do is come in and open up the multi-converter. So this is an extension that's available for download on the Tecla warehouse. And what this allows me to do is to export all of these files to a step file, which is what we're going to send into SigmaTube so that they can then process them. So the option I'm going to choose up here is one file by assembly mark. So no matter how many assemblies I have selected, it's going to create me an individual file per assembly. And then I'm also just going to change this down to step file. Then if you want to include the quantity, you can do that. And then once I have those two settings set up, I'll just go ahead and click on convert. And then what this is going to do is it's going to go in and grab each assembly, create a step file, name it the assembly mark so that I'll have a folder once this is done with an individual file per assembly. So here's the folder with all of the step files that have been created. I have a free CAD viewer that allows me just to view these step files or I could just insert them back into Tecla. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this here. So this is the one that we just created. You can see that it's exported these as just nice straight tubes with the nice cuts, which is what they'll use in Sigma tube. And for the machine cutting, if I close this, we can take a look at one other example. Let's say that we look at 8707. 
and if I just zoom out so we can view the whole thing all at one go and spin this around again you can see that it just has the nice uh, cuts that are positioned here that we can then send over to Sigma tube so that's the workflow uh, within Tecla. Just go in and create uh, your handrails. Make sure that you're using just the mitered options instead of bends. And then also for the copes, if you want to include those, the machine will be able to do that. So then I just take these files, send those over to SigmaTube so that they can be processed. So David, I'll hand things over to you. Thanks, Lee. I'm David, a web support engineer at SigmaTech. We're going to take that step file from Tecla and bring it into SigmaTube. SigmaTube is an add-in for SolidWorks, so the file is importing through SolidWorks first. A step file created in Tecla comes in as an assembly automatically. So all we need to do is save the file and the bodies inside. This will create an assembly file with supporting individual part files. Once this is done, we can process everything through SigmaTube. This runs feature recognition on the exact profile of your tubes so that they are recognized in SigmaTube. Then we can easily filter out parts that aren't run on your tube cutter. Based on the profiles recognized, SigmaTube generates the appropriate stock, of which you can select the quantity and length to be added to this job. Next, we generate toolpath on all the parts. and nest them using our patented true shape nesting algorithm to maximize material usage and reduce scrap. Once we have them nested, you can see where SigmaTube automatically modified the toolpath. Since four axis machines cannot bevel, SigmaTube will cut these miters and copes along the inside diameter in order to leave a weld gap, so your fabricators don't have to grind anything and can just weld them. Next, we can preview the entire stick getting cut right alongside the NC program you'll be sending to the machine. And finally, once we post to the machine, we can pull up a report for each stick, which details the stock parameters and cutting times with information about each part on that layout. And that's all there is to it. That is some really cool stuff. David, appreciate you coming in and showing us that. And I think my favorite part is watching that toolpath run uh, where you just see simulated how that pipe is going to be cut. Just some really impressive stuff that we're able to do uh, with data from the model and uh, feeding into machines. So I think that about wraps up the content of what we had planned to show today featuring the workflow from modeling and handrail into Tecla, feeding that down into Sigma tube to be processed all the way through the cutting with EMI. So I've listed here the websites if you have any questions or want to contact us about this or any other products that we offer, feel free to use the website to navigate to the contact us portion of the website and then we'll reach out to you as quick as we can. But uh, we definitely appreciate your time today. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. If you have any feedback or want to watch any of the previous webinars that we've done, you can see the website there. And as always, thank you for watching.